In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the website BlendSpace in your classroom. This is one of my favorite digital tools, um, especially because my class is one-to-one, -one, so every student has an iPad. So what you're going to do first is you're going to go to the website BlendSpace.com. And if you've never used it before, you're going to click on Sign Up and that you are a teacher. Now you can sign up with your Google account, which is what I did because my school district is a Google district. So we all have a Google account. Um, if you don't have one that's related to your school, then you could sign up using your school email address. So I'm going to go log in. And I'm going to log in with a Google account and pick my work one. And I want to accept, yes, I want it to have access offline. Okay, so first I want to show you what a finished blend space can look like. So let me find. We're going to look at the one I made on comparing decimals. So this is a blend space that I created for my fourth graders to use during math workshop. And what I like about this website is that it clearly organizes for your kids the order that you want them to work on certain tasks. So when my kids get the link to the blend space, they see these boxes. Some of this extra stuff is here because I have the ability to edit. So they're going to click and see. So first thing they're going to do they would do for this workshop is watch a video. So I used a Google Doc here and I added a link to a video that I created. I used kind of a flipped classroom model so they get their lesson through a video. So they would watch the video, their directions tell them, they have an anchor chart they need to fill out and they'll glue that in. When they're done they would click the arrow to go to the next task. So here was an activity that they did using their iPads and some decimal cards and manipulatives. So they had to go through and um, ended up creating a video explaining how they compared different decimal numbers. When they were done with that, they would move to the next one where they played decimal war with a partner. And I had them set a timer for 10 minutes so that it wouldn't go on forever and ever. So those were their directions for the game. Then they had a practice page that they did out of our textbook and so they had um, some choices of which problems to complete and then they also had to bring it to me so I could check it. I also put a link to IXL so they would click open in a new tab and it would take them to the specific problems I wanted them to work on in IXL. We don't have a membership to IXL, but your kids can do a certain number of free problems, a certain number of problems a day for free. So that's what they did. Then, so it, it cuts them off after 20 problems. So I didn't have to put how, or actually I did over here. You can see I put how many problems to answer. And then the last thing was a versatiles, which is a manipulative activity that we have in our classroom. So that's what a finished blend space looks like. Um, so if we were going to create our own, let's go back to the home page. So you can see that I have a lot of lessons that I've created. When you're creating a lesson, you have a couple of options. The first is you can go to the gallery and you can search for lessons that have already been created. So let's say we wanted to create a lesson on place value. So here you can see um, blend spaces that people have created on place value. So let's just pick one. When you click on it, you could go through and look at all the different boxes on their blend space. And if you liked it, you would click copy. And now you've created a copy of that blend space within your own lessons. And now you have the ability to edit it. So let's say I don't want them to watch this video. I can click the X and OK, I want to delete it and it's gone. Now, maybe I just wanted these other ones. I can move it around. And then now when I share it with my kids, they'll only see these five boxes. I could also add another resource if there was something else I wanted them to do. So that's one option. I would also suggest renaming it so that it doesn't say copy of. So it's okay if you use the same name as somebody else's, as long as you're not trying to profit off your blend space. So that's one option. If you want to make your own from scratch, which is what I typically do because I'm a little bit of a control freak, 
I would go back to the home page and click new lesson. This is, you can have different classes to organize. So maybe you would have one that's math, one that's science, social studies, so on. I don't have mine organized that well, so just personal lessons. So now we get a blank template. So here's where we want to type our title. Okay, and then over here is where you can drag in your resources. So you can search YouTube. So we can type place value and see what comes up in YouTube. I found if I create my own YouTube video that I want the kids to watch, it's easier if I have it pulled up in a tab and I can just copy and paste the link. Um, but let's say I liked this song and I wanted my kids to listen to this song. I'm just going to drag it over to the box and then I can change the title and I can add some notes. So watch and sing along. Okay, so there's also Google. You can search Google so we can find some images that come up or we can search the web for websites. Um, like here is Khan Academy. I can click preview if I want to see what it looks like. We'll open that in a new tab. And here's a, a whole list of activities on Khan Academy. So I could take that and drag it here. Maybe I tell them to watch the videos and work through the practice problems. These aren't necessarily making a great lesson. I'm just giving you some options. You can search Flickr. I don't really use that one. You can search Educreations. So those are going to be some videos from the Educreation site that you could look through. I'm not even sure what Guru is, but you could search that. You can insert a web page. This is one of the ones I use the most often is if I've found a website that I like, I can just copy and paste the link into this box and then drag it over. You can upload files from your computer. You can insert something from Dropbox. I use Google Drive a lot, which it doesn't want to work right now. Um, but I will type something in a Google Doc and then insert it into the blend space, especially if I have pictures of examples that I want the kids to be able to see. I find it's easier to make it in Google Docs and then add it to my blend space. And I can do another video on how to do that. Um, let's say another popular thing is to just add text. So I just like am giving them directions for a game. And I just want them to know how to play the game. You can adjust the size. You can change the font. They have a few different fonts there. And you can type your directions. And then again you want to title it so the kids know what they're doing. You can also add a quiz. So what place is the three in? And you can put your answer choices. So the correct answer would be the tens place. You could also say you want the second one to be the correct for the hundreds place. We can add an answer and the ones place. And we can add multiple questions. And then click done. Now you won't necessarily be able to see how all of your kids did unless you set up an account for your individual students. But it would be good for them to be able to get some feedback on if they're on the right track or not. So you can also link like my kids have access to Edmodo and so I could link them to a quiz in Edmodo if I wanted to. So you really have a lot of options on what you include in your blend space. Now when you're done with your blend space you're going to click share and here you can see if you're in Edmodo as a school you can share straight to your Edmodo groups. You can also copy and paste the link and share it with your kids or um, there's some other options. My, so you can print a QR code for your kids to scan. I normally will just copy and paste the link into Edmodo. I find that works the best for me. If you have another teacher you're working with, you can send them the link 
to collaborate or type in their email address and add them. And then that way they can go in and edit the blend space as well. So hopefully that's helped you have an idea of how to use blend space. And I hope that you're able to try it out in your classroom.